Chapter 14 Now it fell on a day that Jonathan the son of Saul said to the young man who bore his armor, Come, and let us go over to the Philistines' garrison that is on the other side. But he didn't tell his father. Saul abode in the uttermost part of Gibeah, under the pomegranate tree which is in Migron, and the people who were with him were about six hundred men. And Ahijah, the son of Ahitab, Ichabod's brother, the son of Phinehas, the son of Eli, the priest of the Lord in Shiloh, wearing an ephod. The people didn't know that Jonathan was gone. Between the passes by which Jonathan sought to go over to the Philistines' garrison, there was a rocky crag on the one side, and a rocky crag on the other side, and the name of the one was Bozes, and the name of the other Sena. The one crag rose up on the north in front of Michmash, and the other on the south in front of Geba. Jonathan said to the young men who bore his armor, Come, and let us go over to the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. His armor-bearer said to him, Do all that is in your heart. Turn, behold, I am with you according to your heart. Then Jonathan said, Look, we will pass over to the men, and we will disclose ourselves to them. If they say to us, Wait until we come to you, then we will stand still in our place, and will not go up to them. But if they say, Come up to us, then we will go up, for the Lord has delivered them into our hand, and this shall be the sign to us. Both of them revealed themselves to the garrison of the Philistines, and the Philistines said, Look, the Hebrews come out of their holes where they had hid themselves. The men of the garrison answered Jonathan and his armor-bearer, and said, Come up to us, and we will show you a thing. Jonathan said to his armor-bearer, Come up after me, for the Lord has delivered them into the hand of Israel. Jonathan climbed up on his hands and on his feet, and his armor-bearer after him, and they fell before Jonathan, and his armor-bearer killed them after him. That first slaughter, which Jonathan and his armor-bearer made, was about twenty men, within, as it were, half a furrow's length in an acre of land. There was a trembling in the camp, in the field, and among all the people, the garrison and the spoilers, they also trembled, and the earth quaked, so that there was an exceedingly great trembling. The watchmen of Saul and Gibeah of Benjamin looked, and behold, the multitude melted away, and they went here and there. Then Saul said to the people who were with him, Look now and see who has gone from us. When they had numbered, behold, Jonathan and his armor-bearer were not there. Saul said to Ahijah, Bring here the ark of God. For the ark of God was there at that time with the children of Israel. It happened, while Saul talked to the priest, that the tumult that was in the camp of the Philistines went on and increased. And Saul said to the priest, Withdraw your hand. Saul and all the people who were with him were gathered together and came to the battle. And behold, every man's sword was against his fellow, and there was a very great confusion. Now the Hebrews who were with the Philistines as before, and who went up with them into the camp from the country round about, even they also turned to be with the Israelites who were with Saul and Jonathan. Likewise all the men of Israel who had hid themselves in the hill country of Ephraim, when they heard that the Philistines fled, even they also followed hard after them in the battle. So the Lord saved Israel that day, and the battle passed over by beth -Avin. The men of Israel were distressed that day, for Saul had adjured the people, saying, Curse be the man who eats any food until it be evening, and I be avenged on my enemies. So none of the people tasted food. All the people came into the forest, and there was honey on the ground. When the people were come to the forest, behold, the honey dropped, but no man put his hand to his mouth, for the people feared the oath. But Jonathan didn't hear when his father charged the people with the oath. Therefore he put forth the end of the rod that was in his hand, and dipped it in the honeycomb, and put his hand to his mouth, and his eyes were enlightened. Then answered one of the people, and said, Your father directly charged the people with an oath, saying, Cursed be the man who eats food this day. The people were faint. Then Jonathan said, 
My father has troubled the land. Please look how my eyes have been enlightened, because I tasted a little of this honey. How much more, if the people had eaten freely today of the spoil of their enemies which they have found! For now there has been no great slaughter among the Philistines. They struck of the Philistines that day from Michmash to Ajalon. The people were very faint, and the people flew on the spoil, and took sheep and oxen and calves, and killed them on the ground, and the people ate them with the blood. Then they told Saul, saying, Look, the people sin against the Lord, and that they eat with the blood. He said, You have dealt treacherously. Roll a great stone to me this day. Saul said, Disperse yourselves among the people, and tell them, Bring here every man his ox, and every man his sheep, and kill them here and eat, and don't sin against the Lord in eating with the blood. All the people brought every man his ox with him that night, and killed them there. Saul built an altar to the Lord. The same was the first altar that he built to the Lord. Saul said, Let us go down after the Philistines by night, and take spoil among them until the morning light, and let us not leave a man of them. They said, Do whatever seems good to you. Then the priest said, Let us draw near here to God. Saul asked counsel of God, Shall I go down after the Philistines? Will you deliver them into the hand of Israel? But he didn't answer him that day. Saul said, Draw near here, all you chiefs of the people, and know and see in which this sin has been this day. For as the Lord lives who saves Israel, though it be in Jonathan my son, he shall surely die. But there was not a man among all the people who answered him. Then he said to all Israel, Be you on one side, and I and Jonathan my son will be on the other side. The people said to Saul, Do what seems good to you. Therefore Saul said to the Lord, the God of Israel, Show the right. Jonathan and Saul were taken by lot, but the people escaped. Saul said, Cast lots between me and Jonathan my son. Jonathan was taken. Then Saul said to Jonathan, Tell me what you have done. Jonathan told him and said, I did certainly taste a little honey with the end of the rod that was in my hand, and behold, I must die. Saul said, God do so and more also, for you shall surely die, Jonathan. The people said to Saul, Shall Jonathan die, who has worked this great salvation in Israel? Far from it. As the Lord lives, there shall not one hair of his head fall to the ground, for he has worked with God this day. So the people rescued Jonathan that he didn't die. Then Saul went up from following the Philistines, and the Philistines went to their own place. Now when Saul had taken the kingdom over Israel, he fought against all his enemies on every side, against Moab, and against all the children of Ammon, and against Edom, and against the kings of Zobah, and against the Philistines, and wherever he turned himself, he put them to the worse. He did valiantly instruct the Amalekites, and delivered Israel out of the hands of those who despoiled them. Now the sons of Saul were Jonathan, and Ishvi, and Malkishua, and the names of his two daughters were these, the name of the firstborn Merab, and the name of the younger Michael. And the name of Saul's wife was Ahinoam, the daughter of Hahamaz. The name of the captain of the host was Abner, the son of Ner, Saul's uncle. Kish was the father of Saul, and Ner, the father of Abner, was the son of Abiel. There was hard war against the Philistines all the days of Saul, and when Saul saw any mighty man or any valiant man, he took him to him. Therefore I urge you, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace that was given me, to every man who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think reasonably, as God has apportioned to each person a measure of faith. 
For even as we have many members in one body, and all the members don't have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. Having gifts differing according to the grace that was given to us, if prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of our faith, of service, let us give ourselves to service, or he who teaches to his teaching, or he who exhorts to his exhorting, he who gives, let him do it with liberality, he who rules with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without hypocrisy, abhor that which is evil, cling to that which is good. In love of the brothers be tenderly affectionate one to another, in honor preferring one another, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit serving the Lord rejoicing in hope, enduring in troubles, continuing steadfastly in prayer, contributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you, bless and don't curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Don't set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Don't be wise in your own conceits. Repay no one evil for evil. Respect what is honorable in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as it is up to you, be at peace with all men. Don't seek revenge yourselves, beloved, but give place to God's wrath, for it is written, Vengeance belongs to me, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink, for in doing so you will heap coals of fire on his head. Don't be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Chapter 51 Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon, and against those who dwell in Lepkamai a destroying wind. I will send to Babylon strangers, who shall winnow her, and they shall empty her land, for in the day of trouble they shall be against her round about. Against him who bends, let the archer bend his bow, and against him who lifts himself up in his coat of mail and don't you spare her young men, and destroy you utterly all her host. They shall fall down slain in the land of the Chaldeans, and thrust through in her streets. For Israel is not forsaken, nor Judah of his God, of the Lord of armies, though their land is full of guilt against the Holy One of Israel. Flee out of the midst of Babylon, and save every man his life. Don't be cut off in her iniquity for it is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render to her a recompense. Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand, who made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunk of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Well for her, take balm for her pain, if so be she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her, and let us go every one into his own country, for her judgment reaches to heaven, and is lifted up even to the skies. The Lord has brought forth our righteousness. Come, and let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. Make sharp the arrows, hold firm the shields. The Lord has stirred up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, because his purpose is against Babylon to destroy it, for it is the vengeance of the Lord the vengeance of his temple. Set up a standard against the walls of Babylon, make the watch strong, set the watchmen, prepare the ambushes. For the Lord has both purposed and done that which he spoke concerning the inhabitants of Babylon. You who dwell on many waters, abundant in treasures, your end is come, the measure of your covetousness. The Lord of armies has sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill you with men, as with the canker-worm, and they shall lift up a shout against you. He has made the earth by his power, he has established the world by his wisdom, and by his understanding he has stretched out the heavens. When he utters his voice, there is a tumult of waters in the heavens, and he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightnings for the rain, and brings forth the wind out of his treasuries. Every man is become brutish and is without knowledge. 
Every goldsmith is disappointed by his image, for his molten image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them. They are vanity, a work of delusion, in the time of their visitation shall they perish. The portion of Jacob is not like these, for he is the former of all things, and Israel is the tribe of his inheritance. The Lord of armies is his name. You are my battle-axe and weapons of war, and with you I will break in pieces the nations, and with you I will destroy kingdoms, and with you I will break in pieces the horse and his rider, and with you I will break in pieces the chariot and him who rides therein, and with you I will break in pieces man and woman, and with you I will break in pieces the old man and the youth, and with you I will break in pieces the young man and the virgin, and with you I will break in pieces the shepherd and his flock, and with you will I break in pieces the farmer and his yoke of oxen, and with you I will break in pieces governors and deputies. I will render to Babylon, and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea, all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, says the Lord. Behold, I am against you destroying mountains, says the Lord, which destroys all the earth, and I will stretch out my hand on you, and roll you down from the rocks, and will make you a burnt mountain. They shall not take of you a stone for a corner, nor a stone for foundations, but you shall be desolate forever, says the Lord. Set up a standard in the land, blow the trumpet among the nations, prepare the nations against her, call together against her the kingdoms of Ararat, Minai, and Ashkenaz, appoint a marshal against her, cause the horses to come up as the rough cankerworm, prepare against her the nations, the kings of the Medes, the governors and the deputies, and all the land of their dominion. The land trembles and is in pain, for the purposes of the Lord against Babylon do stand, to make the land of Babylon a desolation, without inhabitant. The mighty men of Babylon have forborne to fight, they remain in their strongholds, their might has failed, they are become as women, her dwelling places are set on fire, her bars are broken. One post shall run to meet another, and one messenger to meet another, to show the king of Babylon that his city is taken on every quarter, and the passages are seized, and the reeds they have burned with fire, and the men of war are frightened. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, The daughter of Babylon is like a threshing floor at the time when it is trodden. Yet a little while, and the time of harvest shall come for her. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, has devoured me. He has crushed me. He has made me an empty vessel. He has, like a monster, swallowed me up. He has filled his maw with my delicacies. He has cast me out. The violence done to me and to my flesh beyond Babylon. Shall the inhabitant of Zion say, And my blood beyond the inhabitants of Chaldea, Shall Jerusalem say? Therefore thus says the Lord, Behold, I will plead your cause and take vengeance for you, And I will dry up her sea, and make her fountain dry. Babylon shall become heaps, a dwelling place for jackals, an astonishment and a hissing, without inhabitant. They shall roar together like young lions. They shall growl as lion's cubs. When they are heated, I will make their feast, and I will make them drunken, that they may rejoice and sleep a perpetual sleep, and not wake, says the Lord. I will bring them down like lambs to the slaughter, like rams with male goats. How is Shishak taken, and the praise of the whole earth seized, how has Babylon become a desolation among the nations? The sea has come up on Babylon. She is covered with the multitude of its waves. Her cities are become a desolation, a dry land and a desert, a land in which no man dwells, neither does any son of man pass thereby. I will execute judgment on Bel in Babylon, and I will bring forth out of his mouth that which he has swallowed up, and the nations shall not flow any more to him, Yes, the wall of Babylon shall fall. My people, go out of the midst of her and save yourselves, every man, from the fierce anger of the Lord. Don't let your heart faint, neither fear for the news that shall be heard in the land. For news shall come one year, and after that in another year shall come news, and violence in the land, ruler against ruler. 
Therefore, behold, the days come that I will execute judgment on the engraved images of Babylon, and her whole land shall be confounded, and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. Then the heavens and the earth and all that is therein shall sing for joy over Babylon, for the destroyer shall come to her from the north, says the Lord. As Babylon has called the slain of Israel to fall, so at Babylon shall fall the slain of all the land. You who have escaped the sword, go, don't stand still, remember the Lord from afar, and let Jerusalem come into your mind. We are confounded, because we have heard reproach. Confusion has covered our faces, for strangers are coming to the sanctuaries of the Lord's house. Therefore, behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will execute judgment on her engraved images, and through all her land the wounded shall groan. Though Babylon should mount up to the sky, and though she should fortify the height of her strength, yet from me shall destroyers come to her, says the Lord. The sound of a cry from Babylon, and of great destruction from the land of the Chaldeans. For the Lord lays Babylon waste, and destroys out of her the great voice, and their waves roar like many waters, the noise of their voice is uttered. For the destroyer is come on her, even on Babylon, and her mighty men are taken. Their bows are broken in pieces, for the Lord is a God of recompenses, he will surely repay. I will make drunk her princes and her wise men, her governors and her deputies and her mighty men, and they shall sleep a perpetual sleep, and not wake up, says the king, whose name is the Lord of armies. Thus says the Lord of hosts, The broad walls of Babylon shall be utterly overthrown, and her high gates shall be burned with fire, and the people shall labor for vanity, and the nations for the fire, and they shall be weary. The word which Jeremiah the prophet commanded Sariah, the son of Neriah, the son of Messiah, when he went with Zedekiah the king of Judah to Babylon in the fourth year of his reign. Now Sariah was the chief chamberlain. Jeremiah wrote in a book all the evil that should come on Babylon, even all these words that are written concerning Babylon. Jeremiah said to Sariah, When you come to Babylon, then see that you read all these words and say, Lord, you have spoken concerning this place, to cut it off that none should dwell therein, neither man nor animal, but that it shall be desolate for ever. It shall be, when you have made an end of reading this book, that you shall bind a stone to it, and cast it into the midst of the Euphrates, and you shall say, Thus shall Babylon sink, and shall not rise again, because of the evil that I will bring on her, and they shall be weary. Thus far are the words of Jeremiah. Psalm 30, a psalm, a song for the dedication of the temple by David. I will extol you, Yahweh, for you have raised me up, and have not made my foes to rejoice over me. Yahweh, my God, I cried to you, and you have healed me. Yahweh, you have bought up my soul from Sheol. You have kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Sing praise to Yahweh, you saints of his. Give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but joy comes in the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. You, Yahweh, when you favored me, made my mountain to stand strong, but when you hid your face, I was troubled. I cried to you, Yahweh, to Yahweh I made supplication. What profit is there in my destruction, if I go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise you? Shall it declare your truth? Hear, Yahweh, and have mercy on me. Yahweh, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing for me. You have removed my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness, to the end that my heart may sing praise to you and not be silent. Yahweh, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. 